welcome to another session of Business Data Science with Delali. And today, we are here to talk about another very important topic, okay? So today, I'm going to discuss three common mistakes that people do when they are evaluating AI systems or essentially large language models, okay? Three common mistakes that you must avoid when you are evaluating large language models. Now, if you are not clear what actually is, you know, large language model evaluation, I've done some videos on that. So the first one was just an introductory video uh, of large language model evaluation, okay? And then I did another video to kind of like talk more about the three lenses, okay? The three lenses through which you can actually evaluate your large language model. So whether you are a business person, you know, a product manager or, you know, a marketing person that is trying to adopt AI tools uh, or a customer service, uh, you know, personnel, whoever you are, if you are interested in using large language models or if your company is interested, certain things must be in place. And number one, you have to make sure that what? The language model is evaluated, okay? large language model evaluation is very very important in fact i would argue that nowadays for business analysts and even for data scientists one of the things that you have to build your skills in very well is to how to truly evaluate large language models okay so we're not going to go you know deeply into technical issues here but I'm going to just explain some three common mistakes that I think will be useful for you, no matter uh, your background, okay? So, number one mistake, okay, that I see always uh, when people are trying to evaluate large language model is skipping the very simple error analysis, okay? The very simple human in the loop error analysis. Now. What do I mean by uh, simple human in the loop error analysis? So, let's say let's use a chatbot for 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 this example. Okay, let's say you you've built a chatbot using you know either Gemini or OpenAI's uh, you know GPT model or Claude's uh, GPT model, any of these uh, you know foundational models. Okay, you have used them to build a chatbot. Okay for your business okay maybe a chatbot to answer common questions that come uh, you know from different people that are interacting with your business okay and you want to see if this chatbot is working well okay the number one thing that you need to do is to actually have an interaction with the chatbot and record situations where the chatbot fails okay this is this is what i call a simple you know error analysis okay so you go through you know some interactions it can be 50 interactions it can be 100 interactions so you can have like maybe two or three people actually use the chatbot and record you know their interactions with the chatbot and situations where the chatbot actually uh, you know provide wrong answers or just uh, you know do not do well overall okay and then record that and then try to understand what situations uh, you know is the chatbot having challenges answering the questions that is being asked you know under what conditions what type of questions in fact you can go on and classify the issues where the chatbot is having challenges answering these type of questions you can classify them into various groups so that you can actually understand is there any clear pattern okay in fact i have friends in the industry who have done this and you know they realize that a lot of the things that they can improve is just can be discovered by doing simple error analysis but you know what in practice most people instead of them to do a simple error analysis they go about trying to do a lot of fancy things you know you know they go and read a lot about how to do large language model evaluation they try to you know implement very complex uh, you know processes come up with like big metrics that they're analyzing i mean look do not skip the very basic step i mean like even in a classical machine learning model like we always teach our students that uh, 
it's always good for you to just, just just look at the data do do data inspection okay look at the data and see how your model is predicting uh you know the responses or whatever outcome you want to predict right it's the same concept here okay just look at the conversations okay maybe you have a data team that has recorded all the conversation logs of the chatbot okay read through that transcript understand uh you know the questions that the users are asking and how the chatbot is responding okay and then label okay this is why i say humor in the loop label situations where the bot is doing well and situations where the bot is not doing well and then understand the reason why the bot is you know making errors classify them classify the error situations just try to understand what might be going on why the bot is uh, you know really making mistakes uh, in some of this okay and you might you might end up finding that okay maybe in some cases you know the bot is just not understanding the question well or maybe how the question is phrased the bot is not clear or maybe just like something very simple is missing that you can actually iterate your prompt to make the answer better okay so this is number one mistake people do by not doing a very simple error analysis but going all the way to implement fancy frameworks you know fancy diagrams you know complicated stuff please you are wasting your time if you have not done the very simple basic error analysis okay you know many times people are thinking oh yeah let me build a new tool you know tool first this is what i call tool first mindset look it doesn't work at all don't don't be that person who wants to just do a tool first okay so number one make sure you do the very simple error analysis by recording the transcript or the conversation logs and understanding which ones the bot is erroring okay the llm or the llm system is giving wrong answers and try to understand the why behind that okay understand why okay so that is number one mistake do not skip the very simple human in the loop sometimes people call it manual uh you know evaluation and error analysis i have seen that this seems to work in most cases than a fancy automated complicated method so number two most common mistake that i see in llm evaluation that you must avoid uh, is actually over focusing on generic out of the box llm metrics okay over focusing on generic out of the box llm metrics so many people when they want to evaluate how a large language model that they are using to build a custom tool for themselves uh, you know if they want to evaluate how it is working they just go and apply or implement out of the box uh you know llm eva packages okay there are a lot of them out there and you see metrics like truthfulness helpfulness score uh you know bias score you know accuracy tone of the model quality score and all of that look i'm not saying all of those models are uh, or all of those you know metric are not useful but what i'm saying is that do not over focus on that because if you do that you are going to miss the key important item that you need to know which is you need to understand the specific reason why you built your system and try to make sure that you solve the basic problem why your system is built okay make sure that that's working fine before you go about boiling the ocean you know focusing on this you know generic llm uh, evaluation metrics okay now sometimes i can tell you that having the generic uh out of the box llm metric is actually worse it's worse than not having even any metric at all and here's why if you have that generic uh, metric what's happening is that you might be thinking that oh you are actually data driven you have some metrics that you are using right that's that's the worst part but guess what all of those are really giving you no signal okay they are actually in, in for the most part they may be very noisy okay now some of them can work based on how you implement it but like the point i'm i'm making here is make sure that you do not over focus on you know generic out of the box you know sometimes people will you know implement some nice fancy 
you know out of the box LLM metrics and build a very nice looking dashboard and then tell everyone that oh here is my LLM EVA dashboard please this is not a game of dashboard okay seriously this is not about dashboard right it's about making sure that you are evaluating the very reason why you have built your system okay and one way to do that is to think and understand the most important thing that you want your chatbot or your AI system to solve and then come up with the metric that will help you understand exactly or measure exactly whether or not your system is achieving that goal okay so like I said some gene some generic metrics are useful but do not over focus or over emphasize uh, on them okay sometimes if you have too many metrics also out of the box you don't even know which one to focus on and so just understanding the particular thing that you want to solve or you want your AI system to solve and then coming up with you know the metric to do that and not over focusing on you know the out of the box one is very very important the third most common mistake that i see people make when they are evaluating ai systems or large language model systems uh, is actually over emphasis of benchmark performance okay now using benchmarks are good you know but they are not reliable for your specific use case okay so first of all let me let me make sure everyone understand what i mean by benchmark so benchmarks are you know open source publicly available data sets that are curated mostly by researchers or you know big companies like google OpenAI, facebook you know you know these are benchmark or many different companies you know have put out there uh, you know this benchmark data that can be used to assess how these you know large language models particularly the foundational models perform okay now if you have gone out and built your uh, a system using either your own foundational model or you know one of the foundational models that are out there and you build your system using these models and then you go and want to just evaluate these systems solely using your benchmarking data that is out there you'll be misled okay so do not over emphasize benchmarking data because guess what a lot of these models especially the foundational one they are actually optimized on this uh, benchmarking data because that's how you know the researchers judge how good their models are so before their models are fully out i suspect that they actually go out there look at you know this open source benchmarking data like the mmlu or the hella swag or the gsm 8k they go look at this data and actually optimize or fine-tune their model so that their models can work very well on those data so that if anyone takes their model for example if you take you know open ai's you know gpt4 or whatever and then take google's gemini and you compare them on this benchmarking data all of them want their model to rank at the top which means that they actually go use this data and optimize okay now if you now use their model uh, and you know use it for your use case without evaluating how the model is working for your own use case but instead go back and maybe apply some of your system you know functionalities or use cases using these you know benchmarking data you'll be misled because guess what benchmarks most often overfit okay they they don't actually reflect the real usage of your system and so it's better for you to actually have your own way to generate your use cases and evaluate that rather than actually just depending on what benchmark okay and also benchmarks are static okay they are not being updated uh, and so you know they have poor coverage of you know some of the dimensions that are very important for example you know helpfulness you know the safety of the system and all of that and 
benchmarks are just different from your use case okay so once we 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 use benchmark to evaluate the foundational models to compare how different models perform in general against the benchmark it's important that when you are evaluating your own systems okay you kind of come up with your own use cases and see the performance of your system on your own use case and do not over index or over emphasize okay benchmarks okay that's very important so today i've just reviewed with you three common mistakes that i've seen a lot of people make when they are evaluating large language models okay number one is they skip the very simple human in the loop error analysis that's very important number two they end up using out of the box generic llm evaluation metric that is not always the way to do it okay do not make that mistakes come up with your own metric that is making sense or that is more meaningful for your use case and then number three they overemphasize benchmark use using benchmarks to analyze because of course it's very difficult to generate you know your own user interaction or use case data but that doesn't mean that you should depend on benchmarks for your use case okay i hope this is helpful and we'll be sharing more insight on how you can better evaluate your large language model okay talk to you later bye bye